If you have a tick problem, this video is for you. Baby, don't you understand that we only get one life? I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Ticks are really bad this year, and unfortunately, they're extremely hard to eradicate. So today I'm going to show you one of the only ways to truly reduce your tick population without having to spray a bunch of chemicals all throughout your yard. And the good news is, it's cheap and easy. Whether you're living in heavy wooded acreage like us, your home backs up to the woods, or you just simply have a really large yard, ticks are rampant and they show no mercy. I personally have gotten bit over seven times this year when working on the back half of our heavy wooded property. And technically, summer hasn't even started yet. We're in our first week of June. And ticks carry so many diseases. It can take months for these symptoms to show up, so it's incredibly important if you get bit, you seek out antibiotics immediately. Of course, there's tons of things that they market to you to spray in your yard, spray on yourself. And the most common method that people use to get rid of ticks is diatomaceous earth. And the reason that we don't like using that is because yes, it is going to help with your tick problem, but it's also going to kill worms and slugs and beetles and spiders and all those creatures that we love and want on our homestead because worms are so beneficial for your soil. Ticks typically sit on the very edge of plants, wait for something to walk by and hop on for the ride. Especially somebody like me who has really smooth legs, I can hardly ever tell when they're crawling on me, which is why I've gotten bit so many times this year. But Cody, he has hairy legs, so he can feel them crawling all through him and he can pick them off, so he rarely gets bit. But just to give you a little demonstration, or if you wanna to try to experiment on your own property and see how bad they really are, we're gonna take a white cloth and run it along our brush line, along with through our grass, and show you just how many ticks we can pick up. I can literally see them on the edge, jumping onto the cloth. Just from that one little swoop, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight ticks just from that tiny little area, less than 30 seconds of dragging the cloth. That's insane, and I definitely wanna get some of these tick tubes out here. So let me show you how to make them. We're gonna be making tick tubes, and I'll make sure whenever we're putting them out to explain to you how they're so effective and how exactly they work. But for now, I'm just gonna show you exactly how to make them. So, you need toilet paper rolls, or paper towel rolls that you cut, cotton balls, and a bottle of this, which I will make sure to leave in the description. This bottle is about $17. I do think they make a smaller one. But for the amount of product that you're getting, it's totally worth it. For 24 of these tick tubes, you're gonna spend $74 but I could probably get about 200 tick tubes out of this. But before we get into it, I did wanna give a quick disclaimer or a warning. We are using this low concentrated, and I mean low, less than 1% concentrated bottle of Sawyer insect repellent. The active ingredient in this is called permethrin, and permethrin is used in your standard tick tubes, but at a much higher concentration. Permethrin at high concentrated levels is known to be highly toxic to cats. So never use this product in the presence of cats. So Salem, you gotta go, but I'll move him in just a second and he can go wander in the woods for a bit. The reason that we like using this specific Sawyer product is because it has a low concentration level and it's safe for tents, backpacks, and even your clothing. And per Sawyer's website, it poses no harm to cats once it is completely dry. However, with everything, I encourage you to do your own research and your own due diligence, especially when using pesticides like permethrin. With that being said, we've used tick tubes long before we had a barn cat, long before Salem showed up one day, and we've never had any issues. But because we're using something at such a low concentration, it may take a little bit longer to decrease the tick population, so really just do what's better for you and your property. With that being said, again, I encourage you to do your own research and your own due diligence and only do what you are comfortable with. All right, now let's get into it. I would always highly encourage some gloves. You're gonna get enough cotton balls to stuff in this guy and just give them a good spray down. So now you're gonna take your tube and stuff them with all of the cotton balls, but you don't want it too tight, you want them kind of loose. So once you got enough, it should look like this.
want about 24 tubes per acreage of land, but we try to just do them as we accumulate our rolls. So right now I have about seven that we're gonna go place. You wanna put these in places where mice gather. How it works is the mice will come and grab the cotton ball, take it to their nesting places, make nice little beds out of it, and then the ticks that are feeding on the mice will die. Everybody has been going through this box that we have by the pond over the past couple days, and we know for a fact that there are mice in there, so I'm gonna take one of the tubes and pop it inside. This is where we process all of our firewood and it's the summertime, so she has not seen very much love, if I'm going to be honest. Very messy, so much work that needs to be done over here, but we're not in need of firewood right now, so it can wait. However, mice heaven over here, they love it. So let's pop one of these suckers somewhere in this vicinity. We're gonna go place these where we need them on our homestead and we'll be right back. All right, friends, and that is how you DIY some tick tubes. As always, make sure you do your own research. While permethrin is labeled safe for mice and dogs, there is a slight risk towards cats. We've had tick tubes on our property for quite a long time, way before Salem was even around, and we've never had an issue, so we continue to use this method because we know that he's not very interested. He's not gonna go and eat these things. However, your homestead, your rules, your research. So always do your due diligence. If you have any questions at all, make sure you leave them in the comments. And if you have a tick prevention method that works best for you, also leave that in the comments. We love learning from you guys. And then let us know if you like seeing videos like this. We want to start taking a subject and really dissecting it and coming at you with an in-depth video. So hopefully we'll be able to bring you more of these in the future. As always, thank you for being here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Baby, don't you understand that we only give one life. I want to make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand.